Hello everybody, this is Reggie Time here and I'm at the final table of a very small buying, just a five buying tumor on Sky Poker. But, um, I like to record all of these for posterity, any final table that I make, so don't play many tournaments. So here it goes, it could be a five minute video, it could be a who knows how long video. Well, we have the aces, it could be the shortest video of all time. Hold, we do not hold. And um, oh, we do hold. We hold on the refer. How about that? How about that for an action pack start to a video? Beautiful stuff. That could have been the shortest video of all time. Fortunately, <clears throat> we got some redemption on the river. So happy, happy days. I shall bring the payouts across in a moment. They're not particularly exciting. But um, still, you know, for a £5 buy-in, there's £500 guaranteed for a £5 buy-in, and it only got 55 runners. So there's a nice, big, juicy overlay. Can I make this a little bit smaller? So it all fits. Um, better look at my hand first, hadn't I? Yeah, so there was um, just the 52 runners to start with sort of massive overlay which is always nice and the payments are we've well, already guaranteed 40 185 up top um yeah so let's see how we can do i would hope with my stack size now we would at least be able to lock up at least third place, which is good for 75 quid. Hopefully second, which is good for 110. And then we could just explore just how abysmal my heads up game is when we're playing heads up for an extra 65 pounds. Well, we're a long way from that yet, so let's just see. No real desire to battle with extra man is the biggest deck at the table. Um, Antis involved. I think we'd have to defend the 8 6, but I'm not going to defend it when there's no antis. We'll be out of position to the only guy who can who can bust us. Might be a weak fold. Don't know. Don't really care. I don't mind extra man doing a lot of the donkey work here and just wiping out. Most of the field. What are you going to do, Elderon? You're going to lose. So now we are guaranteed fourth place money, which is £55. We are balling. Just, just limp. Let's see if Wacko will let me limp. I saw Doug Polk doing it the other day. Uh, maybe he was doing it because he was up against better players. Who knows? But, um, you know, this board texture we're just going to bet with our five. So win the four, we're happy with that. For those of you who watch my games, um, typically I'm a cash game player, my push fold game will not be anywhere near up to scratch. In terms of like what it needs to be to be a good MTT player, <clears throat> but having said that, on a five pound Sky MTT, I'm not expecting to need to have a really like top notch push fold game because I don't expect these guys to have one either. I mean, there might be some good players. I have no idea. I have literally no idea if there's any like decent MTT players in this. It's a five pound Sky MTT, so the chances are that. We're not going to be running into um, any budding Fedors just now. Check back against the guy that can cause me a lot of damage. They're playing really weak. I don't really care too much that I'm playing really weak. I guess we have to call for a chop here, are we? I'm not going to try and bluff him. Not that bothered. We'll just take the chop and move on. I don't know in Ted's in... I want to win this tournament just because... Well, I want to win it because it's £185, which is nice. But I also want to win it just because um, I like to win. So I am taking it seriously and I'm just not going to tangle with this gentleman, this extra man, without either having a hand or until it's absolutely necessary. There's just no reason right now to um, 
there seems no reason right now for me to to be butting heads with him <clears throat> excuse me pick up the call again we're just going to check back and i may call some rivers here because there are some draws he can have five six good shots he was just in the small blind wasn't he so he can have some kind of good shots too so check back here we'll probably pay a small bet he didn't try and bluff us before off the chop did he so i don't think he's wow he just bombed it he's preserved my chips at this point don't need to be calling nine thousand chip bets when you put three thousand into the pot and again extra man is not the guy i want to deal with well, let's get jub out of the way first and then we'll we'll see where we go from there that's the it's the first part of the mission put a little bit of wacko earlier he seemed pretty tight uh, Job's been splashy, but um, at the like, I was at the like penultimate table with him, whatever you want to call it. But um, I, I still, I bet I only played no more than twenty twenty five hands with him, and he was a bit aggressive when he had a stack. Then I was lucky enough to double through him, and he shoved three or four times. The both times I saw him get it in, he got it in with like hands that you would expect people to shove with. So. Um, don't know a lot about him he might just have been having hands he, he might just be aware of how to play his short stack who knows hopefully wacko just calls it off here and one of them gets severely damaged having two of them hanging around on that stack size is somewhat irritated Again, and this is this is in no way any kind of educational video. Don't be looking at this video and think, "Oh wow, this is how this guy plays final tables." I want to try and use that in my game because I am not an MTT player. I am certainly not a sort of player that's would class himself as being skilled with the, at these stack depths. You know, like whatever it is, fifteen blinds effective. Is it twenty blinds effective with the two short stacks? Um. Yeah, I've no real fucking clue. We're just going to hope to find some good hands and, and help that get us through. And if we can't find some good hands, we'll hope to find some good luck. That's pretty much what the strategy is going to be. I guess we have to open Ace-3. Ace-3 if I get shoved on, of course. We do get shoved on. Whatever. In the muck. I do have a tendency when I do, well, in any, whenever I play tournaments, um, I think my like, stealing and chip accumulation, I mean, well, but chip accumulation is good because um, when the, when stacks are deep at the start of the tournaments, I think that's really good. Um, but I do tend to blind away more than perhaps some players would, some better tournament players than me would. I think I'm a little bit too nitty for like super short-handed tournament play, but again on Sky Poker, where I'm not expecting the overall skill level to be that high, that's I'm expecting to be less of an issue. The last time I played a final table, it was a $35 deep stack on Triple Eight. You can look back on my videos if you haven't seen it and look how I played that. I managed to win it, lucky enough to win it, but I don't think I played particularly well at the final table. I think I just got I got lucky at the right time, so it was more of a Victory for luck than skill, I think. Obviously, we're going to snap it off with the Ace King. We are in great shape. Not in great shape anymore. And there we go. I really don't like his jam there. Well, I don't know. I don't like it. it feels horrible to me. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? As I said earlier, he did seem kind of like pretty jam happy. I'd be quite disappointed if we finish up fourth. I don't think I've sucked out very often in this tournament if at all kind of not really been all in until the last until the last couple of tables when stacks just that's just the way the game plays out it'd be quite disappointing if i um if i finish fourth primarily because somebody hit a three outer but whatever 
that is the life of the tournament player and that is typically why I don't really play tournaments very often because I mean this doesn't matter because this is just like a five pound tournament and um, the actual money involved is without wanting to sound like a cocky best and it's like pretty much irrelevant to me um, but in general like losing these like high equity flips or being forced to take super high equity flips is typically why I don't enjoy playing MTTs. I know there's, there's definitely a skill to having a solid push for a game and and not saying it's all about luck, but um, you know, if you're an MTT player, your month or your year or whatever can be defined by a relatively small sample of, a relatively small amount of hands where if you either win a load of flips at crucial points, you can have a crushing year. If you lose a bunch of flips at crucial points, you can have a devastatingly bad year. And I don't really want my poke of fate to be to be decided that way. I'd rather it was decided by at least feeling like an element of control. And again, that's not to take away anything from from the guys that play multi-table tournaments for a living because they're good at push forward and they, they, they're often getting their money in as a decent favourite then fair you know it's, it's a skill it's a skill that's just rewarding um, it's just not for me really you know you get it in Ace King versus Pocket Jacks or whatever maybe for half the chips in play in a, in a final table and you just you and you're on the wrong side of that Um. I find that sort of thing pretty hard to take. I guess I'm raised fold in this jack queen. So we've got 14 big blinds. There's no ante, so... I don't think we need to be like, calling any shoves or anything. At this stage. I guess I'm going to be defending versus that snap min race from Jub. Unless extra man comes along with a raise or something. Completely brick, so I guess it's just check fold time. We just have nothing going on for us here. Back has been really tight. I wonder if we can just like open shove in. I don't know if we have to though, it's like there's no antis. If there's antis I think maybe open shoving's better there, but with no antis don't feel compelled don't feel compelled to just try and steal with any two cards against Wacko I hope about to jump tries to put a bunch of pressure on me again here you're a reasonable flop for our hand I expect to be having that like, King X he maybe with a three bet pre as he did earlier. And maybe not, but possibly does. Don't think he's got an ace too often because I think he would have three with that pre somewhat reasonable amount of the time. Just gonna check it down and hope the Queen's good. And it absolutely wasn't good. I would absolutely would have got action on my money there had I decided to get active with my draw on the flop. Extra man's been particularly gentle from the small blind, which is she's welcome. Jub's definitely the most active player here. I think Jub's going to be the guy that possibly has the yo-yo stack. If we're going to get any action on our money pre-flop, Jub seems like the most likely guy we're going to get it from. It's a shame. Um, it's a shame we couldn't make the ace king hold against him. 13 big blinds right now, no antis. Six minutes left on this level. Next level is going to be 1500, 3000. Oh, we're on a break, so we'll pause it. Um, Yeah, we'll just pause the video and then we'll come back when the break's over. Come 
and whack or do some busting. Get me that extra cheeky little pay jump. It's not worth much. Only 20 quid, but we'll take it. Looks like extra man isn't back from his rest break yet. Pretty sure Jub should just have been back there. It looks like extra man is definitely not in the house right now. Nope. Come on, Jub. Use your brain's killer. Let's move it on a little bit. Time is ticking away. Extra man, you get to the fan tail of a tournament, you've got a massive stack. How do you not make it back from the break? How is that possible? Doesn't compute to me. She's giving Jubal license to run right at the moment, I guess, but not much we're gonna be able to do about it. I will be probably jamming this at oh, Jub's limp, so no. I would have jammed that into Wacko because Wacko does seem to be playing insanely tight. Literally, don't think I've seen him put a chip in the pot of this final table. Yeah, I could be wrong. I hope Jub just doesn't just give him a courtesy double up here. That would be quite irritating. Oh, Jub. What are you doing to me, Jub? That is not a good flop for me. Not a good turn. Not a good river. Things have gone a little bit sour, haven't they? Gone from us being like a nice commanding second place to losing as a whatever we were, 70% favourite to now being the short stack. And not having any hands. We need to be moving some chips around, but the four six off just isn't going to um, not going to get the job done in that respect. No, it was just seven ten off. Two minutes sixteen away from having a five big blind stack, which is. Pretty alarming. But then when we keep getting the queen deuce, etc. Really, really not sure what we can do about it. We will be just jamming any two here into Wacko, should we get the opportunity? Don't trust Jub to make correct folds, so don't want to be jamming too light into Jub's blind. This could be interesting because Extra Man's not showing like too much. I thought he might have maybe had something he could have considered calling with there, but he didn't. Obviously, going to jam the deuces. Oh, we're a little bit protected by Jub's. Loose calling ranges by the fact extra man was in the big blind there. 
We're not going to afford the sixes, obviously. I'd rather not be three bit in Jackal with him, though. Much rather be three bit in one of these other two guys. Extra man has been very kind from the small blind. Just going to jam into Wacko again. Are we going to get caught with our hands in the cookie jar? No, we am. Um, get away with it. And now we've got a stack where if we double through, we're back in the game. And we've got just 26 seconds left on this level. So we're going to be down to having just an eight big blind stack again in a moment. Not much we can do with the two six, but we'll take the blessing of it. At least we we saved a thousand chips by just getting our big blind in, in time. Here we go. Come on, the extra man. Let's see some red. Let's see some kings, nines, aces. Nope. We are now. I'd say a very strong favourite to finish fourth in this tournament. I would say. We're gonna need we're gonna need to get some good cards and get action on them. Or we're gonna need just some big clashes going on between other guys. I mean none of these guys are super safe now. I mean 10, 20, 20. I mean, any double up for, for me through one of these two guys, and you know, so we can hopefully apply a little bit of pressure to them. 10, 9 off. I just don't think it's a jam. It might be. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. I think with antis, it might be a jam. I think without antis, I think it's probably a fold, but I don't know. I just don't know. No, the 9-8 is going to be a fault if we... Come on, extra line. Give us that one last walk. Beautiful. Don't think we're going to jam into Wacko this time. I wasn't going to do it anyway. We have done it, I think, three times in a row. Not going to jam the 7-3. I'm aware I'm probably playing way too nitty here. As I said earlier, um, I expect I am too nitty for super short stacked high blinds situations. Um, oh, whatever, this is what it is. It's how I'm made. I don't know how to do any differently, so I'm just going to stick with, with my style for now. It's not like I need to study it. I play very few tournaments. Uh, so it's not like it's something I really have to get massively obsessed by we are going to jam the ace though and we win some folds which I'll take just try to stay alive till we actually make something exciting happen who knows Joe could just go fucking nuts here and and just dump the rest of his stack on Wacko you just never know Joe was always going to be the volatile guy at the table. Cham in his eye, wacko. That's the spirit, son. Chub calls it off and he's going dead. So that is Chub just donating second place to us. Just dumped 20 quid in my lap. We'll take that. Thank you, Chub. Look at wacko. He's done nothing. Well, it doesn't seem like he's done anything remotely special. He's just knitted it up. And now he's got a commanding chip lead. Fair play to you, Wacko. Fair play to you, sir. And now I feel like I'm free rolling. We get a chance to... Hopefully spin it up, spin the stack up and jump from 75 to 110, which will be a... A welcome extra 35 quid. But um, yeah, we'll take 75 
for the five build up for a five pound buy in 75 it's a decent return on our investment it's fair to say and who knows we might still just get lucky you just never know we just need to hold here we don't need to get lucky we just need to not get unlucky and unfortunately we did so there we go we won 75 pounds not gonna watch the table hope you guys have enjoyed that limited time that we spent playing but um, yeah it's just more for my benefit than else that we record these things so i can go back and like, just look at them over time so yeah bye for now and take care